Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I have muted you so that if you want to talk, you raise up your hand and then I will allow you to unmute yourself. Uh, just to ensure that people don't forget themselves and you leave their mic on for maybe the noise at their end to come into the class. So having said that, I would like to welcome you to our continued discussion of jurisprudence. And we are still trying to finish the natural law school and then we quickly start with the legal positivism. Uh, so the last time we uh, discussing uh, Long Fuller's uh, uh, contribution to natural law, if you remember, and we said that uh, uh, Long Fuller uh, is said to be a procedural uh, with a natural lawyer or theorist. That is to say that uh, he is more interested in uh, the processes, the procedural aspects uh, of the legal system of the law. In other words, if you wanted to have law, which is just, which is immoral and so on, then in fullest view, as we saw last time, the law or the legal system must actually reflect certain essential uh, moral values, which are uh, actually internal or intrinsic to the system. They are within the system itself. And that is why he talked about the, the inner morality uh, or, uh, you know, of the law as it were, uh, that if you take any, for example, the the, the, the desiderata we talk about, including the fact that you must publish law so that those who are supposed to be governed by it will, understand, will know what the law is and all that. Certainly, it is a precept or a principle which is uh, supposed to be contained in the law itself, so much so that if you had a legal system or if you had a law which uh, did not have to be made known to the citizen, to the government, to the subjects, then it will probably be uh, uh, what they call like the an apology of what law is, because how can you expect people to be governed by that which they are not aware of? And that is why he will make the point that uh, certain uh, you know, criteria are so certain criteria are so germane that uh, they must be uh, reflected in the law. Uh, my listing is some of them. Just sorry. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, so um, this morning we want to leave uh, Fuller and then uh, concentrate on uh, John Finnis. Uh, John Finnis is a, a very uh, interesting, and I would say, uh, unique contemporary uh, contributor to natural law uh, thinking. Now, uh, he is for his still alive, is an Australian uh, jurist and uh, philosopher. And his contribution to natural law is actually located between uh, the ideas of Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas. Now he wrote in the uh, early part of the 80s, or so like the late uh, 70s, he did a very important work, uh, which is called the uh, Natural Law and Natural Rights. And in that work, uh, 
Finnis saw to uh, do, he saw to add a new uh, perspective to how cultural law should be understood. So one uh, important uh, perspective which also influenced his thinking is what they call uh, the teleological uh, theories of Aristotle and Aquinas. I've explained to you uh, what we mean by teleological within the natural law thinking. Uh, I said that teleological from the word uh, teleos, that is it, like the purpose. And uh, that law uh, has purpose, society has purpose. And for that matter, if you have a law, the law should help man, should help society to attain the purpose which uh, is there. For that matter, uh, Aquinas will make the view that society has purposes and significance uh, which can only be achieved by an appropriate system of law. And finding the appropriate system is a concern uh, for jurists. We say like jurists, uh, those who are interested in matters of uh, philosophy of the law, matters of jurisprudence, they are the jurists we're talking about. So uh, Aquinas starts from the premise that yes, law is not just uh, no, there, it's not just neutral. Uh, law is supposed to be instrumental is supposed to uh, enable us to achieve the purposes and significance we have as human beings, as human society. And for that matter, uh, what is really crucial is that how we are able to uh, you know, mobilize, we're able to organize, we're able to craft, law and deploy it in a manner in which it will help us to achieve the purpose or the purposes we have as a society and as human being. Now, in John Finney's view, one of the purposes which society has is what we call human flourishing, human flourishing. Uh, by human flourishing, that is to say that whatever constitutes a worthwhile and a valuable life, that is uh, what you mean by human flourishing. So maybe like human beings being able to achieve their full potential, being able to have a good and quality life and all that. All those things are uh, instantiations or they are reflections of what uh, Finnish will help us understand as a, a human uh, flourishing. And uh, Finnish's theory uh, has been characterized as the most authoritative modern restatement of natural law. And mind you, I'm not saying that uh, Finnish is the only one who has stated natural law theory, no. But I'm talking about restatement that is uh, bringing a new understanding to what we call the natural law school in the modern times. Uh, so that is uh, where uh, Finnish uh, sits. According to uh, uh, Finnish, there are certain basic goods, and these basic goods are self-evident, uh, self-evident in the sense that uh, you don't uh, need any external proof to convince yourself regarding the necessity, regarding the essence of those goods. And that is why I said that when you say something self-evident, self-evident means that uh, 
the evidence of the truth, validity, or the authenticity of that is contained in itself. And you don't need uh, to uh, actually look elsewhere to get proof regarding that. That's why I said that uh, those uh, basic goods are self evident. And in his view, self evident because every reasonable person must ascend to their values as objects of human striving. In other words, to finish, the basic goods he claims are self-evident are so-called because every human being who reasons, you readily agree that uh, those uh, goods are actually what every human being, what society is seeking to achieve. And that is why he said that they are self-evident. And what are these uh, basic goods? Uh, he provides uh, a list. So uh, these are uh, life, well, life, and by life, uh, Phoenixes means the drive for self-preservation we all have. That is to say that uh, every human being would like to keep himself alive so long as it's within his power. So by life, uh, Phoenix is referring to every aspect of vitality and Vitality comes from the Latin word vita. And in Latin, vita means life. So uh, everything which puts human being in good shape for self-determination, you must be alive to be able to go to school, isn't it? You must be alive to be able to learn a trade or any skill. You must be alive in, in, in order to uh, progress in life. All the big uh, ideas, the big dreams, ambitions, which we have as human beings, if you do not have life, they, they are useless. They don't mean anything at all. Because those who are not alive or those who have died, they cannot uh, achieve any of those things. And that is why uh, Finnish will say that life is uh, a basic good and it is self-evident. Uh, so uh, life will include also not just being alive, it's also uh, health. You, uh, you know, being healthy or having a good health and also uh, you having freedom from pain, from pain and so on. So all those things are examples of uh, uh, what finish means uh, by life as being uh, a basic uh, good. And not only that, uh, related to life as a basic good is also uh, procreation, like procreation that is a reproduction, uh, human beings uh, giving birth to more of their kind so that we don't perish or you don't get a stint from the face of the earth. So procreation or reproduction is an aspect or is embedded in the basic good uh, of life, uh, which uh, Phoenix uh, identifies in his restatement of the natural law. And uh, not only uh, that, again, uh, anything which you know, which actually enhances, which sustains life are all considered as being part of life. And that is why uh, if you have an arrangement, we seek to, for example, take the procreation ability, a reproduction uh, ability from a person that will be contrary to natural law thinking because 
you are undermining the realization of one of the basic good, which is life. Because if, for example, you, you, you render people eugenics or you sterilize people, right? So that they are unable to uh, you know, bring forth, become pregnant or make pregnant and so on. Then that way you are hindering uh, the ability to procreate and that undermines uh, 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 life, which uh, finishes uh, talk about. So let's uh, keep that uh, in mind. And of course, related to life will also be the issue uh, which has exercised some attention uh, in recent times, uh, things like uh, uh, the right to die. So uh, life as a basic good will mean that there's nothing like right to die. So uh, anybody making a claim to have the freedom to decide whether he will end his life or all that. It is not consistent with natural law. It's against natural law because natural law thinking, at least going by uh, Finnis's reason and some other you know, people like uh, Aquinas and all that, we readily agree that uh, life is very important. You must be alive before all other things. So let us uh, keep that uh, in mind. Another basic good that is a, is a knowledge. Knowledge or the second basic uh, value, uh, which uh, Aquan, oh yeah, sorry, John Finnis has actually identified. And by knowledge, uh, Finnis say that knowledge as a basic good is a good in itself. Uh, to be well informed rather than uh, ignorant or muddled. So this knowledge here, we are not talking about the utilitarian or instrumental or material knowledge. And what do I mean by that? You are not talking about, for example, a good number of you, you are learning law for obvious reasons that you want to become lawyers, right? Or you want to be certified as having a degree in law so that I can use it for all other purposes and so on. That is not the kind of knowledge uh, Finnis is talking about. Uh, by knowledge as a basic value, what Finnis meant uh, is that uh, knowledge is desirable for its own sake, not merely instrumentally. In other words, in Finnis's view, every human being, every rational being does not want to be ignorant. Every rational being has the, the quest and the desire to know and pursue the truth, not for anything, but just for knowing sake, just for knowing the truth, uh, the true position sake, that is all. And that is why, uh, Finnis will say that uh, knowledge, uh, which is uh, needed for its own sake, is essential good. There's nothing wrong about the instrumental knowledge like the one that you are pursuing uh, in order to get certified to do a program or become a professional or whatever. There's nothing wrong. But within uh, his uh, presentation of the receiving of natural law, Finnis is talking about the fact that every human being, we have that uh, thing in us, that which is in it, that we want to know and you want to avoid being ignorant, right? We want to avoid ignorance and rather know. And knowing is not just because you want the knowledge to take us anywhere. We just want the knowledge to let us overcome ignorance. So that is uh, very uh, important. And that is why it is not right to tell a lie to a child. You are not supposed to lie to a child because every human being would like to know the truth, would like to avoid ignorance. The other or the third basic uh, value 
or basic aspect of human well-being, which Fenis identified is play. Play, not as in pray, but play. That the P-L-A-Y, uh, recreation. Uh, according to uh, 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 Finnis, uh, every uh, human uh, being would like to have some recreation, some enjoyment, some fun, or some uh, 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 leisure, as it were. And for that matter, we are not talking about maybe uh, the fact that you want to play football, become a, uh, a premier uh, league player or things like that. No, that's what they're talking about. By play here, he's talking about the fact that uh, rational beings are such that uh, between the uh, various activity, their work and all that, they would like to have some uh, realization or some leisure, right? Some fun, some enjoyment, something other than the usual work, uh, which they do as it were. So that is what he means by uh, play. And there are all manner in which you can have recreation. And of course, we know the, 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 the Muslim, which has become cliche, that uh, all work and no play miss uh, Jack a doll uh, boy, which is, I think, that uh, a reflection of Finnish's uh, observation or our identification of play as one of the basic good that every human being and every culture, every culture, uh, there's a recognition of the need to have recreation, to play, and all that. So, of course, related to uh, recreation will also be uh, entertainment uh, and so on, as it were. Uh, then he also identifies the fourth uh, basic good as a uh, aesthetic experience. Aesthetic experience. So aesthetic experience here, phenesis means an appreciation of beauty in art or nature. Uh, that is to say that every human being, according to Phineas, uh has that capacity has that drive to want to appreciate beauty for beauty's sake, not necessarily for anything. Uh, so let us uh, uh, keep that in mind. And we have you know arts, for example, uh, you see. Maybe the vegetation around, you say, though, this is beautiful. You see the landforms, you see the sky, or even see people, you know, people having created something. And there's that something in you which will let to uh, appreciate or acknowledge that uh, this is uh, beautiful. So that is the, the aesthetic uh, experience uh, which. Uh, is talking about. So it is, uh, you know, so, so aesthetic experience according to Finnis is not like play, like it's not like uh, recreation and need not involve a action of one's own. You know, like you cannot have recreation unless you yourself, you are uh, actively involved or indirectly, maybe like you are watching somebody uh, doing it, uh, as, it as, as it were. But for aesthetic experience, uh, what is sought after and valued uh, for its own sake may simply be the beautiful uh, form outside one, an inner experience of appreciation. So the beauty 
can be outside you. And you interiorly, you're appreciating that outside you as being like the beautiful. We also have uh, another uh, social uh, good, which Finnish identify as sociability, sociability or friendship, sociability or friendship. Now, uh, by here, uh, Aquanans is, sorry, I, I like Aquanans, I'm not talking about Aquanans, I'm talking about Finnish. Uh, Finnish is talking about acting in the interest of one's friends. Acting in the interest of uh, one's friends. So uh, sociability becomes one of the uh, well-being uh, or forms of well-being of human beings. That is why I said that is a is a so as, as a, a basic word, uh, uh, good, and at the the minimum, uh, we recognize uh, this uh, basic good sociability or friendship uh, in terms of uh, the peace and harmony among uh, men. You know the fact that we have to live in peace. You have to live in harmony uh, with one another. Also reflects this sociability or this friendship, uh, which uh, we are talking about. And in fact, if you take Ghana, for example, even as a society, right? As a society, if you take the constitution of Ghana, the preamble, the preamble of the Constitution of Ghana, I'm quoting, and I will, I will link it to uh, this sociability or this friendship uh, which Finnis is talking about. So the, the preamble to the uh, Constitution of the Republic of Ghana says, in the name of the almighty God, we, the people of Ghana, in exercise of our natural and inalienable right to establish a framework of government, which shall secure for ourselves and prosperity, the blessings of liberty, equality of opportunity and prosperity in a spirit of friendship and peace underline in a spirit of friendship and peace with all peoples of the world so we underline that in a spirit of friendship and what and peace with all peoples of the world so and then it will, it will continue on and on and on so you notice that even uh, living in harmony with one another is something which at even the collective level of us as Ghanaians per our constitution in this ramble, we have affirmed that we want to live in friendship and peace uh, with all uh, peoples of the world, with everyone. And that is, I think, uh, uh, you know, attestation to sociability or friendship, which Finnish has also identified as what, as uh, a basic uh, uh, good. And of course, uh, sociability or friendship also uh, uh, means that we have to act for the sake of one's friend's purposes and one friend's well-being. So there are you know, times, a lot of times, as you say, that we would like to uh, be working in the interest of our neighbors, just, just for the sake that uh, it will be well with them. And that is an aspect of the sociability or friendship, uh, which Finis is talking uh, about. And for that matter, he will ask, and I quote, to be in a relationship of friendship with at least one other person is a fundamental form of good, is it not? Certainly. I mean, let's let's look at the converse of it. Uh, being in friendship with people, and then the opposite that is the will be that you are being you know you have some enmity or you are loggerhead. Which one is better? Is that not the first one? That is why he said that it is a, a basic uh, good. 
another basic good which uh finish identify is what he calls uh practical reasonableness practical reasonableness and here uh finish is talking about employing one's intelligence to solve problems of deciding what to do, how to live, and shaping one's character. In other words, all the goods which have been identified, as an individual, you need to bring your mind, your reason, reasoning prowess to bear on these goods so that you'll be able to organize your life in a way which enable you to realize the, 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 the human flourishing, which uh, Aquinas, so which uh, Finnis has, for example, uh, identified uh, as it were. So uh, what do you want to do? Just like uh, you students here, uh, most of you have first degrees already and you are now coming to read law, you are working and all that. If you are deciding to embark upon this course, uh, where you are living and so on and so forth, all the, the, the decisions that you make, in a way, they are a reflection of the practical reasonableness uh, which uh, Finnis is talking uh, about. So when you bring your own intelligence as a person to bear effectively, and as uh, Finnis will say, in practical reasoning, uh, that issues in action on the problems of choosing one's actions and lifestyle and shaping one's own character. So that is the practical uh, reasonableness. Uh, which uh, Finnis is talking about. So for example, as human beings, you have the right to self-determination. In other words, you have the right and the power to decide. Uh, or I mean, if you want to put it in theological terms, you call that you have like the, the free will, right? You have your free will. God has given free will to everyone. So you decide how you want to live your life, what you want to do and all that. So how you are able to bring your intelligence, your reasoning to bear on this exercise so that you make the right choices uh, for your life in order to realize uh, your human flourishing is what Finnis means by the practical reasonableness uh, as it were. Now, uh, Finnis also identify religion as another uh, basic good, uh, religion. Uh, religion here, we are concerned about an order of things that transcends our individual interests, things which are beyond us, if you like, so that is uh, what he means by religion. That is to say that uh, every human being uh, would like to either connect or be in tune or pursue something uh, outside him and outside his, if you like, the uh, human uh, uh, level, as it were. So that uh quest for transcendental experience transcendental connection uh is uh, what he means by uh, 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 uh religion and here we are not talking about any uh particular uh, uh religion but we are talking about uh the fact that as a rational being there is something in us which uh, make us want to uh, 
pay attention to that which is outside us as humans. And that is uh, the religion that uh, Finis is talking uh, about. Now the seven basic goods, uh, uh, before we move on, are they exhaustive? In other words, uh, are life, knowledge, play, aesthetic experience, friendship, practical reasonableness, and religion, are these the only forms of uh, the human flourishing? Are these the only basic goods out there? Well, uh, finish. You hear me? I do not think I'm lost. The connection is down. Let's turn the screen again like this. Okay. Sorry, just a bit of a technical. Uh, yeah, so um, the question is, are the seven basic goods, are they exhaustive? In other words, can we add to the list or uh, the list cannot be uh, expanded? Well, uh, some scholars have actually Uh, 
added uh, other things like uh, work and so on. For example, like the work is also a basic good because uh, if we have play recreation, then what it means is that uh, I think the screen sharing is becoming problematic. Let me stop it and then see. Uh, um, my 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 screen keeps uh, freezing, so just uh, bear with me. Let me see the screen can be shared now. Yeah, I think it's, it's better now. Oh, um, when you share then, oh, screen sharing has stopped as the share window is closed. Uh, it's just a minute. Yeah, so the seven basic goods, uh, which, uh, Fairness identified. I also combine with nine principles of practical reasonableness. So don't forget the practical reasonableness have been uh, explained by Fairness as using our intelligence, using our reasoning to actually make choices, which enable us to realize the, the basic goods and for that matter, uh, achieve uh, human flourishing. So in Finnis's view, uh, these, uh, the, the practical reasonableness that he talks about has also got nine principles. So what are these nine principles of the practical reasonableness? One, uh, Finnis will say that the good of practical reasonableness uh, structures the pursuit of goods. It shapes one's participation in the other basic goods, that is, the other sales goods, by guiding one's selection of projects, one's commitments, and what one does in order to carry them out. Yeah, so how you plan your life. So as to achieve all the other basic uh, goods is what uh, he's talking about here. Then uh, two, a coherent plan of life. So that's the second principle of practical reasonableness that you must have a coherent plan of life. And by this, uh, finances means that one ought to have a harmonious set of purposes as effective commitments. So you must have, uh, you don't have to be aimless, right? You don't have to be purposeless. Uh, you must have a goal. And of course, uh, I like uh, the author called Rick Warren, who has written a book called Purpose Driven Life. Is, 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 I mean, is, is, I like the, the, the title, Purpose Driven Life. That is to say that our life must have a purpose. And exactly uh, what Finis is telling us that part of the practical reasonableness is that you must have a coherent plan of what? Of life. Then uh, principle number three of the, I mean, uh, as part of the practical reasonableness, no arbitrary preference, no arbitrary preference among values. In other words, uh, one ought not to omit or unreasonably exclude or exaggerate any of the basic human values. That is to say that the basic goods are supposed to, if you like the, be treated uh, equally. 
they are equally fundamental according to Finis. That is to say that you don't, for example, have to see life as being more important than, let's say, religion. Or you see religion as being important than uh, recreation or, uh, or aesthetic experience, uh, as it were. That all are uh, important. And that is why he says that we have to avoid arbitrary preference. You don't have to uh, you know, elevate one above the other, as it were. Yes, Mr. Samuel J., your hand is up. Uh, let me allow you to release yourself. OK. You can release or mute yourself. Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, I want to seek clarification on the the, 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 you know, he has given the seven uh, 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 principles. Yes. And then uh, you made mention that he also further gave some nine principles, which you uh, uh, particularly uh, sort of uh, um, brought out practical reasonableness. So is it the uh, pr uh, practical reasonableness that has other, uh, other additional nine principles. Yes, the, the practical reasonableness is what has got those nine principles. So the, okay. the, the, the practical reasonableness uh, is broken down into nine, if you like. Okay. So oh, when you say okay. practical reasonable, how uh, does it play out? Then you say that part of the practical reasonableness is that you must have coherent plan of life. Okay. You must avoid arbitrary preference among the, the basic goods. Don't treat one as more important than the other, and so on. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, the, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. the fourth uh, principle of practical reasonableness, which Finis uh, identify is that uh, detachment, I mean, the, the fifth one, sorry. No, I'm sorry, the fourth. That, that there should be no arbitrary preference among persons. One should maintain impartiality in regard to others and their interests. That is to say that uh, we are supposed to respect uh, all people and uh, uphold uh, their choices, right? Because they also have practical reasonableness, which they've also used to uh make choices regarding how they want their life to be and for that matter we are supposed to be uh impartial we are supposed to have that push out of neutrality and objectivity regarding uh other people's uh uh life choices as it were now the fifth principle of practical reasonableness uh finishes notes is detachment and commitment. That is to say that one should be both open-minded and committed to one's project. By project here, as you remember, he's talking about how you have uh, decided in terms of what you want to do, where you want to live, and so on and so forth. Uh, those are what you call like the project. And he's saying that, once you have done that, you must actually be uh, committed to it. So for example, uh, nobody asked you to come and read law. You decided to come and read law at this point in life. So it's a project. And Finis is saying that you must commit yourself to that project. You must commit yourself to that project. Then uh, uh, the sixth principle, uh, the limited uh, relevance of consequence. So here he's talking about efficiency uh, with reason. In other words, one must not squander opportunities through inefficiencies. Everything you are doing, you have to find out, am I getting the most uh, optimum uh, outcome? 
the best outcome which I can uh, get in the circumstances, whatever I am doing. The seventh principle of practical reasonableness is respect for every basic value in every act. Now, one is required to avoid acts that achieve nothing, but that damage or impede one or more of the basic forms of human good. So in every situation, ask yourself, this thing I'm doing, uh, am I going to realize one or some of the basic good or this thing I am doing, it will not advance or achieve any of the basic good. If it will not, if you cannot see any basic good in that particular action or activity, then what it means is that uh, you have to avoid it because you're achieving nothing. You're achieving nothing. And in that case, you are being purposeless. You're being without aim or goal in life. The eighth principle of practical reasonableness Sorry, I think the, it went off again. Yeah, the eighth principle of the practical reasonableness in Finnish thinking is that the requirements of the common good in everything right? In everything you are doing, you should act to advance the interests of your community, the common good. And don't forget, the common good is not a new concept. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, I talk about the common good uh, already in his uh, uh, discussion or presentation on, uh, on law. If you look at the Summa Theologica. So, uh, Finnis is also retreating that, that uh, as rational beings, we must always act to advance the interests of one's community. And in fact, for us Ghanaians, if we take Article 41 of the Constitution, right? Article 41, let me open my Constitution. Yeah, Article 41 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Uh, I think that uh, it underscores uh, this aspect of practical reasonableness, which Finnish is uh, uh, developing. So let me quote Article 31 of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. Quote, the exercise and enjoyment of rights and freedoms is inseparable from the performance of duties and obligations. And accordingly, it shall be the duty of every citizen, A, to promote the prestige and good name of Ghana and respect the symbols of the nation. So that is a common good, isn't it? Because the good name of Ghana and symbols of the nation, the flag, the anthem and all that, and the coat of arms, all these uh, portray Ghana as a sovereign and is part of the common good. B to uphold and defend this constitution and the law. So we have an obligation to uphold the 1992 constitution. And if you go to article three of the constitution, it enjoins all of us to defend the constitution against any attempt by anyone to overthrow the constitution. And that is why if you even kill human being in trying to resist an attempt to overthrow the constitution, you can never be charged with murder. The constitution gives you the power to do that. So if anybody is planning a coup d'etat or trying to uh, do anything, what should disturb the constitutional order? Uh, part of your obligation towards the common good is to expose that person and, and so that you have lived through to your obligation and that the 41 uh, B. And then C, to foster national unity and live in harmony with others. To foster national unity and live in harmony with others. You notice that 
uh, it's not just the common good, which is reflected in 41. Some of the, the basic good, like the friendship, sociability, because we said that uh, an aspect of the sociability is actually also uh, living in peace or harmony with what? With others. Uh, D, to respect the rights, freedoms, and legitimate interests of others. And generally, to refrain from doing acts detrimental to the welfare of other persons. And again, uh, you notice that one of the principles of practical reasonableness uh, Finis identified is that we are supposed to maintain impartiality uh, in regard to others and their interests. And that is exactly what Article 41 uh, D is telling us. Now, 41 uh, uh, E, uh, e to work conscientiously in his lawfully chosen occupation. You know, we've seen as part of the principles of the practical reasonableness that we are supposed to be committed to our life project, to the project that we set ourselves. And 40, Article 41 uh, E is making a similar point that we are supposed to work conscientiously in his lawfully chosen occupation. Then you take F to protect and preserve public property and expose and combat misuse and waste of public funds and property. So this is all part of the common good that if there are public property there, you have obligation to ensure that uh, it is not destroyed, it is not dissipated. So there's nothing like uh, we there, a abide there, and the SAM in Faho, no. That is irresponsible and unpatriotic uh, pusher, and it's actually violative of the constitution, particularly as the 41 F. And you are also supposed to uh, expose and combat misuse and waste of public funds. So if you are an organization and people are wasting money, don't say that this money is not for me or it's not for my parents or my family. So I don't really care uh, if people are using it. I'm just going to be approving or anything like that. You have obligation as a citizen to, to expose and also fight. That is combat uh, misuse and waste of public funds and property. Now, Article 41G, to contribute to the well-being of the community where the citizen lives. So this is only part of the common good. So when you're in a community, anything which you uh, in your to the good of the community, you are supposed to contribute your quota. Article 41 H, to defend Ghana and render national service when necessary. 41 I, to cooperate with lawful agencies in the maintenance of law and order. J, to declare his income honestly to appropriate and lawful agencies and to satisfy all tax obligations. And K, to protect and safeguard the environment. So you notice that Article 41 of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana is actually embodiment of uh, most of the things which Finnish has actually stated in uh, his uh, discussion of basic goods and also the nine principles of uh, uh, practical reasonableness. And finally, uh, if we, the, the ninth principle uh, of practical reasonableness Finis identifies that uh, you must follow your conscience. So one should not do what one feels should not be done. So all of us are supposed to have conscience and somebody will say that our conscience is the highest uh, court. Now, if you are doing anything, your conscience, your mind, or your heart, or wherever the conscience is located, will tell you that whether what you are doing is good or bad. But of course, as human beings and stubborn as we are, we often ignore what our conscience is telling us, and then you go ahead and indulge in that uh, which our conscience says uh, is not good. So 
as far as Phoenix is concerned, the combinations of the principles of practical reasonableness, as we have uh, explained along the nine points, with the Sorry, the internet is misbehaving. Yeah, so we're we making the point that uh, uh, to finish the combination of the principles of the practical reasonableness, with the seven basic goods lead to the immutable, that is unchangeable, and universal principles of natural law. In other words, for Finnis, if you ask him what natural law is, natural law is actually seen in the form that he has explained. We have the seven basic goods, which are irreducible. Irreducible in the sense that for him, you cannot get anything which is more basic more you no know, the basic you no know, necessity as it were of every human being if you are to be a human being than those seven things and also the nine practical reason principle of practical reasonableness that if you bring these together then for him you have the natural law so the natural law is a set of principles of practical reasonableness in ordering human life and human community. And it is also, it is a practical reasonableness uh, person who can grasp uh, these basic uh, values and the law's purpose in realizing them, uh, you know, who can rightly describe the law. That is to say that because we have like the brain, you, no, I mean, of course, not just the brain, like the reason. Everybody has a brain, but you're talking about using your reason. You can actually uh, grasp the, the basic goods. You can uh, assess the principles of the practical reasonableness. And because of that, uh, Finnis is saying that if you are talking about the law, then the purpose of the law should be to enable us at all times to realize these basic goods alongside the practical reasonableness. So law is important, positive law is important, but positive law is important insofar as it will help us to realize uh, the basic uh, goods. So that is the, uh, the point uh, Finnis is making. So I would like to take uh, any uh, questions that you may have uh, before we move on to something else. If you want to speak, uh, please, you put up uh, your hand. Yes, SP's hand is up. Uh, so. Yeah, SP, you can admit yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay, sir. Thank you. Um, sir, my question is in relation to the seven basic uh, goods that we identified. And uh, you were asking whether uh, the list was exhausted. You made mention that other scholars um, have added some other uh, basic goods such as work, but you couldn't complete that um, aspect when your line, um, your system frees, if you can. Yeah, so yeah, that is all that I wanted to say that uh, yes, uh, the 
people have uh, thought about what uh, Phoenix has done and have also seen the need, for example, to include uh, other things like uh, work. And some people may even include what they call like environment. But of course, environment uh, is reflected in one of the principles of the practical reasonableness uh, as uh, we saw. But the point is, Finnis has actually come out with uh, his restatement of natural law. And once people understand uh, the basis of his reasoning, it should be possible for us to uh, work out uh, more examples of what he's trying to tell us. So, so, so that is the point I was trying to was trying to make. And for example, some ones talk about like maybe like the uh, uh, pleasure. For example, uh, some scholars will argue whether uh, uh, pleasure, like pleasure as in like the fun, should also be stated as a, a basic good. Although uh, Finnish did not consider that necessary as a standalone, as you can see. Uh, some of the things like the aesthetic experience, uh, recreation, sociability, or friendship, somewhat all reflect aspect of what pleasure, unless maybe you have a, a very unique uh, understanding of uh, pleasure, in which case you may want to uh, argue that it should be a stand alone uh, basic good. Okay, so we will start legal positivism now in absence of further contributions. Maybe, uh, let me do it this way. Let's give ourselves, uh, there's a, let's give ourselves five minutes break, okay? We come back five minutes break and then we start uh, so that I can break the recording and restart. Otherwise, when I'm sending it to you, it's too bulky. <laughs> 